Welcome to Medically Speaking. Our guest today is Dr. Brittany Keeler, Queen City OBGYN. Doc, thanks for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me. Well, first, congratulations on the move and transition to the Queen City OBGYN. I know it's a lot of work that you have uh, done with general physicians. Um, great news. Uh, if you can, you know, as we go through um, what Queen City is, tell us a little bit about yourself and your background. Yes. Yeah, so um, I'm an OBGYN. I went to medical school on Long Island, uh, NICOM. I did my residency here in Buffalo and I've been in practice since 2016. And so we just formed Queen City OBGYN earlier this year and we have six partners now. We're all female and we're just really excited to be able to offer care to the women of Western New York, um, a population like ourselves that we, you know, we, we care a lot about and have a lot of interest in common with. Yeah, so about your partners and, you know, the approach that you guys have, I mean, female physician leadership, taking care of female patients, uh, you don't see many uh, or, uh, physician groups like that around town in terms of all female oriented. Was that just by luck, by happenstance, or was that by, you know, you guys were direct in what you guys were trying to do and trying to accomplish? A um, little, little bit, a little bit of luck. Uh, that we all kind of happened to be there uh, at the right time. But at the same time, we really wanted to put forth a strong female group to to the community as an option for care. And we were really ha happy with what we developed. And we have such a strong group of women that um, is just really excited to be able to offer our services. So as a OBGYN, you obviously have some specialties that uh, you are involved in. Uh, including being, you know, a certified menopause practitioner. If you can, for those who are watching, what is that and why is that so so unique for the patients or the, you know, the community that we serve? Sure. So as an OBGYN, it's such an expansive field that really menopause kind of gets lost in that training uh, when you're focusing so on, on obstetrics and also gynecology, menopause is more of an afterthought in residency. And so even though we do get a little bit of training of it, definitely not enough in order to be considered um, an expert or, you know, have a, a lot of confidence in what you're delivering. So um, I found it, especially within my patient population, that I had a lot to learn. And so uh, the Menopause Society, which used to be called the National American Menopause or the North American Menopause Society, they decided that there needed to be a standard set for healthcare professionals in order to ensure that they were delivering high quality care. So they developed this examination uh, and those who pass it are deemed to have expertise in this area. So uh, I decided that that was really important to me and I needed to get on board and learn, learn as much as I could to be able to uh, offer my my patients all of the up-to-date care. So I did that a couple of years ago and it's been really amazing to really see some of my patients come back and see the difference that's, that's been made in their lives. That's great. We can, we can feel the passion when you're talking about that and, and that higher standard, you know, that, that national uh, level um, obviously is important. You know, the topic of menopause is not a new one, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, there's the treatment portion of that, but probably when you're dealing with the patients, there's probably a lot of myths and, you know, education that you have to uh, involve your patients with. If you can tell us a little about that in terms of the common myths or things that you, know, you have to deal with when talking to patients. Yeah, so there's a lot of myths surrounding menopause. Um, and unfortunately, one of the most, I would say, pervasive is that menopause is something to just be dealt with and suffered with and you know patients are told oh it'll be fine you'll be fine it'll be over eventually um but really this is a time in women's lives um when they're you know they're at the prime of their careers they're holding positions of leadership they are taking care of not maybe children, maybe adults, you know, are their parents and they have a lot going on. And, and for a lot of women, it can feel like they fall off a cliff and they don't feel like themselves. And so to be in this prime of your life and to all of a sudden have the rug pulled out from under you and you're, you don't feel like yourself anymore is so detrimental, not only, you know, physically, emotionally, mentally, and professionally. So it's definitely not something to just be suffered through. And it's definitely something that practitioners should really 
listen to their patients and understand how, just how um, aggressive or just how detrimental this can be to their lives. So talk a little bit more about that. You know, when does, you know, someone um, approach their provider for that? Or, you know, what would you recommend to that, you know, potential patient to start talking about menopause? Sure. So this actually kind of goes to another myth is that people will assume um, if you're in your early 40s that you're too young and you're not. And uh, some women start experiencing symptoms in their late 30s. So um, the average age of menopause is 51, but symptoms can appear seven to 10 years before that actually happens. So one of the myths is not only that you're too young for menopause, but also that you shouldn't, that you aren't eligible for treatment until you've completely gone through the transition, which is a whole year after your last menstrual period. Um, and women can be very symptomatic before that happens. So in saying that, you know, you, can a patient really self-identify or is this something that, you know, if someone's 30, 35, they should know to have these conversations with their OB, uh, GYN, as they're going through their regular checkups and visits? You know, when do they have that discussion, that frank discussion of, you know, um, with their physician? Well, I would love for every physician, whether it's uh, an OBGYN or a family practitioner or an internist to really start having that conversation, you know, in women's mid to late thirties and kind of give them, you know, this can be happening, this can be a symptom and let's discuss it if it is. Uh, but if that's not the case, then I think it's definitely on the patients to, you know, for us to be able to put forth as much education as we can so they can advocate for themselves and start asking about these things when they uh, reach their mid thirties, early forties. So they can be not only prepared, but know what their options are. So in saying that, what are the options? What types of treatments are available for patients who you know end up coming through the doors to see you guys? Lots of options. We have lots of things and it really depends on where you are in that transition. And so for, we treat perimenopause much differently than we treat menopause, um, but most of it focuses somewhere on hormone therapy. And, and hormone therapy has certainly got a bad rap um, through misinformation or data that was misconstrued. And so there are a lot of uh, safe available hormone options that almost all women can utilize. And so that's what I'm a big proponent of. However, there are certain women that aren't eligible for hormone therapy for whatever increased risk that they may have. And we do have options for them too. So it's not that they're just out of luck. We, we really can treat this across the board. You've heard now from Dr. Brittany Keeler of Queen City OBGYN and the important topic of menopause. Doc, thanks again for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me.